Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to YTV Studios. And with me here tonight, it's none other but the effervescent writer of my journey to destiny, that is Prophetess Penny Mtetwa. What a pleasure having you here tonight, ma'am. Thank you for having me on YTV. Thank you so much. Yes. It's a pleasure for me to be here too. Me as Prince Moraka, it's a privilege to have you here because uh, not too many females, you know, take the initiative, especially the period after the pandemic to say, let me write a book, let me in, uh, inspire a nation. What was the inspiration behind this, my journey to destiny? Prince, you know, my journey to destiny was an inspiration because people are going through a lot. We're going through so much discouragement, loss, pain, fear, you know. Uh, COVID has brought that to us and, and people are giving up people are committing suicide, people think there's no tomorrow, then I thought after everything I've been through and where I see God has put me, I can encourage somebody about my story because at the end of the day, no matter what you can go through, you can still see God coming through for you, he's able. People will say, who exactly is Penny? Where does she come from, you know, how do you best answer that? Penny is coming from KZN, uh, in a town escort a location which is Wembezi location they call it Umjezi Ongashi I come from there it's a small town uh, with lots of agricultural uh, stuff and all that and factories uh, with very successful people small town but love successful people and whatnot. you decided to take this big trek to Johannesburg to enhance your career and your profession. When was this? Um, I came here in 2004 when, I, when my uncle Jeff Adebe came to my father's funeral and uh, he saw me giving my farewell speech to my dad at his funeral. And after that he called me and, and he said to me, you're beautiful. That's what he first said to me. And obviously he wanted to talk to me. We were on the side at home and he said to me, uh, you know, when I look at you, there's no way that you can grow to the full potential that you're supposed to in this town. I think you need to come with me to Johannesburg. And for me, it was too scary because I grew knowing my mom, you know, being that spoiled bread that whatever you want, your money is yours and, and whatnot, you're not responsible. And I'm thinking Johannesburg, it scared me. Johannesburg, it's a big city and all that. So that's what happened, that he said he wants me to come on this side. I made you believe that uh, one of your pastimes, it's uh, healthy lifestyles, you know, things like gym and whatever. Uh, how significant is that, you know, into your life being a prophetess, to be able to keep fit and uh, to be able to relate to people about uh, uh, healthy lifestyles and wellness? Our bodies are a temple of God, number one. So we have to make sure that we take care of the temple. So what we eat, it's important, you know, because you can't be ignorant to say you're prayerful, God is gonna do this while you're not eating. And gym, for me, it's a healing, you know, it's, it's a lifestyle. Even when you're going through a lot, you go and take it out on gym, exercising, even walking you know so for me it's very important and what we put in it's very important naturally you know i just don't like being fat i just grew up my mom, i grew up my mom telling us that figure must be shown on you you can't mm -hmm. you know so i grew up with that and even now because i refuse to be old very quick so i must take care of myself just refusing amen to that <laughs> yeah and obviously you took time planning to do the book itself how much of time did it take you you know the planning part until you execute it and say now finally i'll be getting the book out you know prince you won't believe it it just came last year i think in october yeah. i started the book October and and I didn't see the reason for it to take so long because it's a life journey yes. it's exactly what I've been through but what was going on in my life do I really want to put my life down you know how it is 
won't people judge won't they say this and that you know putting your life exposing everything that is there but i thought when you're a vessel of god everything about you is for somebody that can get help it's your life journey it says my journey to destiny yes. and uh, what was it like that day where you said i'm putting pen to paper i'm starting to ink it now it was when i've realized that you know if it wasn't for god in my life i could have lost it you know i've 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 went to people that i thought they were mothers they were fathers they were you know they knew all these things and i've realized no 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 what i'm going through they haven't experienced it they have no idea about it some of them it's about please you've lost your child get up and you cried now you can't cry for two years you know a christian man doesn't have to do that you need to shake yourself and rise up you know people don't understand that uh, when you go through loss it's not about th- there are a lot of things that happens in your life you know it's not about getting up and just be because you are a woman of god or you are a christian but there's a lot that goes there and even at work uh, I, I started as a check-in agent really where I come from mm. I did I haven't seen an aircraft mm. there's no aircraft so coming here they were teaching me what is an a, a boarding pass what is a tag you know all those things I knew nothing about aviation industry so um I thought there's somebody who can come to Johannesburg we have no idea and they're going through so much and God has call them to be great in corporate you know but because of what they're going through they can give up so i wrote it so that even those who are in corporate they can know that nothing is impossible with god once you set your mind to something it's impossible that you won't have it and when you have jesus on your side and 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 it doesn't matter who says no when time is right he will make it happen now let's talk about the book itself in terms of the appeal you know your market does it appeal to the old or to the new or to just about everyone everyone it appeals to everyone it talks to the old you know i talk about what happened to my mom and dad when the the maid the daughter of the maid had to you know uh do adultery with my dad and all that some people grew up in families like that where life was very good and such things happen and it, it, it disrupts you you know you get so sad you don't get things you used to get at home so the old needs it that you know they shouldn't give up you know they shouldn't give up and even the youngsters who grew in such families just because your parents went through that your life can be better than that mm. you can make a decision that this is what my parents did i'm going to make sure mm. that i become an example mm. it goes to people who are everywhere are doing well in business everywhere committing suicide my sister was very intelligent actually she was about to come to parliament to work there at the age of 33 and that is when she committed suicide in a boyfriend's place so i'm saying to somebody if my sister came to me she she did come to me and say help me there are voices that are telling me to kill myself if i knew god then i could have helped her but i didn't know nothing about god i didn't know how to help her so i'm here to say whoever is in that state of suicide only jesus can help them what was your favorite part of the book my favorite part of the book is when i've conquered mm-hmm. is when i've conquered mm-hmm. is when i was in corporate my enemies calling me who made sure i'll never be promoted calling me on the days where the devil made sure i lose my mom I lose my dad, I lose my sister. Look, my sister passed away on the 23rd. My father passed away on my birthday. My mom passed away 2 days before my birthday. Mm-hmm. So the enemy wanted to discourage me and make my life miserable. Yeah. But God made sure that at work and it was a white company, very white company. Managers were from British Airways. Uh yeah. so of of the company the airline i was working for so it was not easy for a black woman 
to, to climb the ladders. So to, to see them congratulating me on every promotion, it, 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 it gave me so much joy because I stand, even in the church that I'm leading, it's very few people that are not studying. They come having metric, they have degrees now. They study, I'm able to tell them, it doesn't matter what your parents couldn't do, you can do something. Whilst we're on that, I see that uh, you are busy studying towards a Bachelor of Theology, where you're going to be majoring, you know, in uh, um, Christian. Christian, yeah. Uh, the motivation towards that, how much of time does it take? Oh, Prince, it takes a lot. Uh, studying just theology on its own it's uh it takes a lot but i'm just uh determined you know i'm intentional because i don't want to be that kind of a leader that just read the word but i just want to go deep you know uh in knowledge and all that christian counseling to be honest we need it we need it in the church i believe that not because, just because you're a pastor, you can be a counselor. It, yeah. it goes deep yeah. to that. And yeah. I've realized that in our churches, we really have cycles. Yeah, no. So it takes somebody that's going to study with the revelation of God through the Holy Spirit to be able to, to, to check those things and help people. What is rather surprising is that uh, you start up uh, the introduction to, to, the, to the book with a beautiful extract from Ephesians 6 chapter 12. Take us through that then because it seems like this is a centerpiece to your work. Because at the end of the day we wrestle, we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities. You know, we're just living but uh, they, 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 there's another world, spiritual world mm -hmm. that we wrestle upon. People are very um, ignorant mm -hmm. about what's going on. Um, everything that we have today, it started in the spirit. You know, the, the, the storms that we, we have, it started in the spirit. People ignore dreams. They, they eat in dreams. They sleep in dreams. They do so much. I remember one of my daughters years ago came to me very happy saying, oh, mom, I'm so happy. My dad was making breakfast for me, eggs, and she said the breakfast and I ate those eggs and, it, and I said, no man, it was not eggs you were eating. And from that time, her life went down. So it's, it's about uh, cautioning people that we are spirit beings. We shouldn't take things light. You know, whatever that happens, like my sister, my sister, I saw her the first time dreaming about her committing suicide. It was three o'clock in the morning, if I'm not mistaken. And yes, when they went to her house, she was about to do it. So dreams are real, you know. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, you know. In part two of the book, I mean, you venture out and start touching a base with what you call destiny killers. Why destiny killers? There are people who are assigned to make sure that Prince will never go anywhere, mm. no matter how determined you are. Mm. They are destiny killers. All of us have a destiny. We're born to do something for God on earth. We are here in every gate of life, whether in media, journalism, in being a pastor or whatever it is. But the enemy, he is our enemy, and he wants to make sure that we don't reach there. And unfortunately, there are people who have given their lives to work for him, to make sure they destroy such people who are determined and intentional to do right for God. You also make mention about being caged by demon killers. You know, uh, how do you actually get to a point of saying uh, you've had, you know, an altercation with demon killers? You're talking about people that... Yes, the demonic forces. Demonic yeah, forces. Yeah, the demonic to be honest with you, I've, I've, I've all my life, but the, 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 the worst one was when one of lots of people in the church who came to me and told me, you know, actually, I've, I failed to kill you. I've tried to kill you several times, and what I could do is to kill your son. 
please mm. forgive me, mm. you know. And when, 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 when they were confessing those things, it's not like it was a new thing to me. It's something that God was revealing to me. But as I'm saying, why I wrote this book so that people will not ignore their dreams and what God is revealing. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the revealer of every hidden thing. He is there to help us. If I had to listen to God that time, maybe this wouldn't have happened. So exactly as she said it, she told me, and God was showing me that this woman, these people are a group, they are here to do this. But because we see, we see people acting love, acting love in God and all that, we think they're for us. I remember when she even told me that, Ma, I want to tell you, Hollywood actors, they're not better than us. We are taught to be the best. You understand? So it's very important, even for the church, to know that in the church we need to wake up. We don't need to sleep. The enemy is no more there. The enemy is here. You, you further go on in part three, and uh, you extend you know, your writing to the subject of love conquers. It does. Yes. What brought you to that condition that love does really conquer, and what did it conquer for you? You know, Prince, to be honest with you, even my husband doesn't understand. How could you love people who have done this to you? How do you even speak and love them and pray for them? And I guess it's the love of God. You know, it's when God has called you, when God calls you, it gives you a capacity mm -hmm. for whatever he calls you for. And I've seen that loving them, you know, has freed me. It has freed me. It is, I'm not going to be able to hate people who've made up their minds to be ugly, to do the work that they were not called to do by God. So I'm just going to love them and God will do the rest. What has been the biggest control, uh, confrontation you've had, you know, with the congregation, you know, in as far as the journey from writing the book to now is concerned? They're very happy. They're very, very happy. Um, and some of the things they didn't know that happened to me way back mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. but it has opened their minds. They do write and say, thank you. This, this is also what has happened to me, you know, at work, especially about corporate, especially about spiritual spouses and, and, and all those things that we don't talk about because we don't talk about such things. We become too holy. And I believe that we are called to talk about those things that have helped us so that they can help others. Because it's things that everybody is scared to speak about. Yeah. Yet and they are helping people. You, they fe are. you further uh, fly higher in part four, you know, of the book or chapter four, where you center everything around the subject of breaking free from satanic strongholds. What are satanic strongholds? Satanic strongholds, they, 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 they in dimensions. You know, one that I can talk about, especially is household wickedness. All of us mm. comes from families. And families that we come from, there are things we have done. They have done. We have believed that they're okay if we do them. And we didn't know that those things are the things that can be a stronghold on us. You, you get what I mean? Like me, I grew up knowing that to go to a witch doctor with what's happening in your life, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. So not knowing the impact of what you do, but you do things because you grew up seeing them being done, you know, environmentally, and 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 they become, they become you. They become a stronghold, you know. They become your culture, even when you're born again. You're born again, but there's these things that you do that are holding you, satanic things that you've done that you're not delivered from, like ukaba, things that we do. Um, there's a lot, man, you know, but I've experienced it from household wickedness. Yeah, and uh, Prophetess, uh, you just recently launched your book on the 26th of March, 2022. We are today exactly about 18 days into the launch of the book. Um, what could you tell us uh, your great success has been like? Overwhelming. 
the books got finished the first day. We've printed others. They're about to finish. Um, and it's helping people print. You know, there's a lady that uh, came to me um, that said to me, um, you know, I came to you. Uh, I've lost hope. Three months ago, I lost my child and my one and only child. And I wanted somebody who's going to tell me I just lost my one and only child. Not somebody who's going to say, I've got another one. Mm. One is gone. Mm. Thank you for giving me hope. And this is a giant, a woman who really God has called, you know, a powerful woman, to see people have such hope, you know, that... The support from your partner, Bishop, and what's it like, you know, in your journey to destiny? Yo, to be honest... I've, I don't even know where to start when it comes to Bishop. He's just a gift from God. You know, to be honest with you, to tell you my story, Bishop was about to marry somebody in a church that he was in then. Pastors were saying, no, at this time, uh, you, you've grown. You have to get somebody. And they were about to pay Lobola and all that. He says, and he knew that God said he must marry me. Mm. But he just felt, hey, this one, I don't think she would say yes, let me go with this one. When we got there to the lady, the lady said, no, God spoke to me, I'm not your wife. And he, he says the lady told him, he, she told him about me, and he was so freed. And on my side, there was a man who was supposed to marry me too. Remarkable. He a, yes, he was a gynecologist. And God told me that it's, it's not him, he has called me. Uh, to, to get married to him. As things are unfolding, when when my mom was sick, she traveled from KZN and came to be with me. He was there like a brother. You know, we'll take turns. He will go and check on my mom, and I will go and check on my, ma on, on my mother. He's been a friend, a brother, a father, everything. In support-wise, I, I, I don't even know what to say. There were times where I would sleep with oxygen, mm. you know. Um, and oxygen, you know how noisy it is, you know, to sleep with it. I couldn't, if I lift up my hands, there was no strength. He needs to rush and give me oxygen. I couldn't take the stairs up to our bedroom. He would have to get one of the sons. They take me every week to the stairs, pick me up because it was that bad. He's just a loving man. He's a man of God. That, that's all I can say, Prince. The, I've experienced that no matter how the world can be, there are still true men of God out there who preach what they say. And he is just love. You keep making a reference to a character by the name of Vanessa in the book. Take us through Vanessa because Vanessa seems instrumental in a, le a lot of the things that you wrote about. Yeah, Vanessa, a lady that I love so much you know um, she's the one that that confessed you know to everything and she told me um, you know uh, to be honest with you I've been around churches I've been sent to churches and I I do kill you know we've got an assignment she exposed everything that they do in churches and she said every time when you minister I would want to attack you but the pulpit will be attacked. And it happened. Mm. You know those glass pulpits? Mm. It will happen, you know. I would sense, because I just love prayer. I believe God has called me into deliverance ministry. And when that happens, she says she would want to come and attack, but uh, there'll be just something that will keep her. You know, she tried a lot. And it's amazing, because she has been very close. And it made me even realize that uh, when God is with you, no matter who wants to kill you, when he has said no to your soul, nobody will. But I'm grateful for Vanessa, Prince, because uh, now I know so much about the kingdom of darkness. And us as pastors, we really take those things light. We think, <laughs> you know, we know it all because we prayerful and all that. And this kingdom is here to get us. And if we are sleeping and not hearing 
what God is saying to us through dreams and visions and discernment that will finish us. You know, she grew up, she started being uh, a child of the enemy through what I'm saying, household wickedness, the mother giving her to the enemy on the, on the, on the table at the age of five. When she tells you how she dealt with kids at the age of five, and th that is why even our Sunday schools, our kids at home, we need to pray for them because it was a revelation that even when they're in primary and crash, they are those who are assigned to finish their destiny while they're there. We are meeting on the eve of Easter. What is your Easter message to all those watching? I just have this in my spirit that God is restoring everything that the enemy has stolen. He's healing us, he's delivering us, you know, and he's just taking us where we're supposed to be on top of the mountain and shining. And the blood of Jesus is able to destroy and kill whatever is against us. So let's hold on to it, celebrate it. There is power in the blood of Jesus. How do I go about getting the book? I mean, uh, if I'm a noble person sitting at home, the question is, how do I go about getting the book? And what is the cover price? The cover price is 300 rand. Uh, but if you're far, it's 100 rand, uh, 300 rand plus 100 rand for Korea. For now, uh, you can just, there's a number uh, on Facebook and Instagram that you will get there on my page uh, where you can inbox and then you'll get everything about it or make a call to that number. It's been a pleasure having you here on this uh, beautiful platform and I do believe that uh, everything will work its way to further propel you to your final journey to destiny. Thank you. YTV for having me here. It's been a pleasure to be here. It's been awesome. And thank you for the production team. Uh, you guys are very good. Um, it's an honor to be here.